get access to influencing experts. Welcome to Easy Talk Live. Hosted by Eric Zul. Woohoo! You guys ready to do this? Connect with celebrities and entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs as best. Products. News. Reviews. Interviews. Performances. Events. Even a little comedy. Giving back. CEOs connect with the top CEOs in the industry. And now, get ready for Easy Talk Live. Everybody pull your mobile phones out and put your hands together for the Easy Talk Live show. It's time to stop doing it the hard way and start doing it the easy way. Easy way! <laughs> Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the Easy Talk Live. Are you guys ready to do it the easy way? Well, here's the first thing that we do whenever we do Easy Talk Live, which is the best podcast interactive show in the planet to get connected to high profile people. Guys, do me a favor. First and foremost, this is a very interactive uh, program. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your chats. We want to see your comments. We're watching the entire time on your guys' chats and your comments. And if you don't know how to do that, if you're clicking on, if you're on easytalkpodcast.com, the video that you're watching, look on the bottom right, there's a YouTube uh, uh, logo. You click on that YouTube logo, it'll take you to YouTube, and then you can chat in YouTube. Same thing with uh, Facebook and Roku and and, and LinkedIn and, and whatever, but we're really looking for your comments. Shout out to Mike Ball watching and uh, just really, we're, we're excited to, to, to get going. So if you don't know about Easy Talk Live, I've been, my name is Eric Zuli, and I've been doing interviews for over 20 years, and I've interviewed over, over 4,000 celebrities and high quality uh, thought leaders, and, and today's show uh, features a very special guest. And we want to give a big shout out to Catherine Coven Pacino and um, uh, Greg for this. That's how we met uh, our guest. And, and we're going to be bringing him up real soon. If you guys are Star Wars fans, if you guys are, are Guardians of the Galaxy or, or, or Game of Thrones, I mean, we have the guy that's been on all of the uh, platforms. But really, this is the actor that plays the character Darth Vader in the movie Rogue One, a Star Wars story by uh, by Disney, and so it's my honor to uh, to to bring him to the show here real real soon. Uh, but before we bring him up, I want to let you guys know about how you can interact with Spencer, and 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 how you can earn rewards points, how you can get prizes during the show. So first and foremost, everybody that's watching right now, click the share button. Okay, click the share button. Tell your friends. If you click share, we may shout you out on the show. If you click share, uh, we, we may be rewarding you in some way. Shout out to Jackie Harris watching right now. Uh, click the share button right now. Let's push it out there. We're watching you during the show. And if we see you commenting and interacting, we also reward you. Um, all right. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put on a commercial. And then we're going to bring in our special, extra special guest, uh, Spencer Wilding, who is a super actor, and we're very proud to introduce you guys to him. Also, too, guys, if you have a podcast, if you have a podcast, make sure that um, you you take a look at our our programs on how we can help to give you the look and feel like what you're watching right now, um, and how we can super boost your podcast and turn your microphone into money. We'll be right back. Welcome to Easy Way Podcast. Do you have a podcast? Maybe you want to create one. Let EasyWayPodcast.com make it a little easier on you and your guests. For only $99 a month, you can super boost your podcast, get more subscribers, advertisers, and manage everything all in one place with EasyWay Network. Get seen and heard the easy way. Get a larger reach. Meet quality potential guests. You could be on Roku, Apple, Amazon, all mobile devices and smart TVs streaming on EasyWay TV. Our network helps you get advertisers and people wanting to pay you for an interview. 
as well as brand credibility and more social media followers. Try it free. Register to easywaypodcast.com. Hey, Easy Way family, welcome to Easy Talk Live, the live stream podcast that helps you to interact and connect with our top thought leader and famous guests. Be sure and subscribe free to easytalkpodcast.com, that's letter E and letter Z, to be kept up to date on the new episodes and get your opportunity to be a guest on the show. We're so excited for our guest on today's episode, and we know you are too. It's not every day you get the chance to meet the actor who plays the character Darth Vader in the movie Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Get your questions and comments ready. We will be watching for them in the chat. Spencer has also acted in Men in Black International, Harry Potter, Green Lantern, Game of Thrones, Guardians of the Galaxy, The Legend of Hercules and so much more. Now without further ado. Coming to the Easy Talk live stage, our celebrity guest. Put your hands together for Spencer Wilding. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) What's up, my friend? Going on, Blake. You're right. How are you? I'm fantastic. Hello. (laughs) <laughs> say hi to the easy way family guys remember this is press the share button tell your friends get on get on the text message tell everybody that you're meeting darth vader himself you're meeting spencer wilding uh we're gonna really get to know all the behind the scenes but you know i just want to give you the the stage spencer uh, you know look at this like you're speaking just tell my audience your story and 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 who you are and and why you're doing what you're doing well my name is spencer wilding how you doing uh, i've been an actor now for 20 years I started from the sports world, but let me take you back to the journey of baby Spen. So I was born in one of the smallest cities in the world called St. Asaph in North Wales in the UK. Uh, I went to a Catholic school called Oscar Meyer in Rill. Uh, and then I went to a Pestatin High, which is a town very close to Rill. Um, uh, yeah, and then I went to a farming college after that. And then I went to a sports college. And then I went working all around Europe doing construction. Uh, and then I found my way back into the UK, back to Wales. And I started my my dreams, really. That's when I started kickboxing. I come the Wales and British champion. Then I went to uh, pro boxing, undefeated pro boxing. But the reason I went into the sports world, really, is because I, I had a dream to be an actor. And, you know, just work on these great films that I've always looked up to, like Bruce Lee and... Van Damme has lovely martial arts films, you know. And then I got signed up when I took the titles. I got signed up the sports agency called Crystal uh, in their sports workshop in Crystal Palace. And then I found a more of an acting agent called Morello Cherry uh, in the UK. And from there, 50 films later, I'm talking to you guys. How you doing? Woohoo! Well, watch for the chat, man, because there's a lot of people that are uh, that are tuned in right now, and uh, we're seeing a lot of comments come in. And guys, as Spencer's talking to you, remember you can ask your questions, you can post comments, and go ahead and post in the chat right now if you're a, a Star Wars fan. If you want to, and you guys let us know what you want, uh, what direction you want us to head within this uh, this interview. But to start, Spencer, thanks for sharing uh, that story. I just want to give credit to where credit's due. I want to say thank you to, uh, to our good friend, Craig, um, as well as Catherine Coven Pacino. That's how we met, uh, you know, amazing, amazing people. And, and, you know, we, we, we just connected and, you know, I, I want to ask you to help our audience in networking when they have their opportunity, they, they meet somebody or they have the opportunity to, to grow with someone big. Uh, what was it that made you want to stay connected and, and how did we become friends? What was, what was the thing about me when we were networking that made you want to want to connect? With, to you? Is that a question to you? It's just a question in general of how to network, but I'm saying I'm using our relationship and how we met as an example. Well, we obviously we met through, um, there's a guy called Craig Mokula. I've been, Craig, I've been good mates now with Craig for a few years. We will work on a film together one day. And uh, he introduced me to a lovely uh, 
um, it was Patino, uh, stepmother, yeah. Uh, and then they got us together because we did a little meeting, and, and and yeah, it's just one of them. We, you know, that's how we all sort of got our connection. And then uh, we did a pod to get a podcast together, me and Craig and uh, Miss Patino, and um, yeah. And that's how we got our connection. And uh, I was very excited when you said to me, come and come and do a podcast with us. And I said, yeah, let's do it. Well, so I love that. I love how you said that you were very excited when you said, you know, come and do a podcast. So it shows the power of podcasting, guys. If you don't have a podcast, I mean, that's the doorway of how I ended up meeting Spencer. So I'm just saying, like, if power of the microphone is everything. Shout out to Wendy Weber. I see her um, a favor of the original Star Wars series and a couple of the of the later later movies. So so again, guys, you let us know what you want to do. But I want to get really into Spencer. Why did you become an actor? What, what was the reason you went down that road? Well, I did. You know what? I had a dream, and that's it. And, you know, I, I, whatever you want to call it, the big man upstairs, the thoughts, the conscious, whatever. And it spoke to me when I was a kid. And I used to say, "What am I going to do when I grow up?" And the voice come back, "You're going to be a movie star." I went, "What? What? How am I going to do this then?" Well, you're going to be a champion kickboxer. And he'd be a Saturday guy in the audience with a fat cut cigar going, hey, want to be in the movies? He wasn't there, right? But when I took the Welsh and British title, I got signed up the sports agency that put actors, uh, well, top athletes into films and TV and commercials. And and it, that's a, the journey, man. And that, that's how I got in. I come in from the back door because I'm severely dyslexic. And I say this on a lot of podcasts, but I like to tell the kids, there might be a kid listening or a grown-up is listening right now, that's never heard me say this. I couldn't read or write till I was 32 years old. What learned me how to read with my severely dyslexic dyslexia was uh, the scripts being sent through to me. The movie, in, the movie industry was waiting for me to get to that doorway before they could open that door and give me the dialogue and this, that, and the other. And it just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And now, you know, 20 years later, I'm holding me on with the big boys. So it's a bit of a, it's a nice story, man. Well, thank you for sharing that. And, and and hopefully that inspires our our audience that might be dyslexic. And so that we I didn't I didn't know that, but thank you for, for sharing. And and I, I see Brian Grossman just joined said fantastic uh interview. So Jackie Harris is saying men in black. So we're gonna go down that road. Okay. You uh so first and foremost, before we go down the the amazing resume of movies that you've you've done, I want you guys to kind of see spencer uh wilding's imdb okay his imdb is ridiculous and some of the the top movies that you've watched you've probably seen one of spencer's characters or the the actor he plays as the characters you'll see that he's he's his resume is is, is amazing but since our, our uh jackie mentioned men in black uh let's go into men in black international you play luca brass um uh you know tell us a little bit about the behind the scenes on that or how how you know anything that, that you've never told anybody else let's 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 go into the, to, mm. to that movie uh I've, i might have told somebody else i might have forgot who <laughs> told but so how i got luca brase um I, yeah and like an audition you know got an audition and then uh to play the character uh luca brase and to be in a men in black production is great anyway you know because i'm a fan of all that stuff so to play and to work with Chris Hemsworth as well, complete sweetheart, you know, great, great family man. And he's just a great guy. Uh, but his stunt double is uh, Bobby Holland Hatton. And me and Bobby were mates and we go back to the Green Lantern, you know, we filmed that in New Orleans. Um, so when I knew I was going to be on the Men in Black with them guys, I was, I, you know, I was, I, you know, big smile on my face. Before I'm going to see the boys and I'm going to get to work with Chris. Uh, which is pretty cool and i didn't click straight away but i'm a fan of the godfathers uh and you know so the name is the name's luca brase you know and luca brase was from the original godfathers swim the fishes and all that and then hollywood i was the second actor to be privileged to carry that name and luca brase so i remember watching the film i was like come on speed up a bit speed up a bit i want to see if they put brase at the end of luca and they did thank you very much to the film gods there uh the the film gods are 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 awesome and uh we have a we have another um another so so brian grossman saying star wars the rogue one so i mean i can't believe i mean i've i've interviewed a lot of people spence i i've interviewed i mean kevin sorbo with hercules and i know you've been in her uh the, the hercules uh what is it the legend of, legend, hercules. Legend of hercules yeah, yeah. Callum 
but but I'm interviewing Darth Vader from Rogue One. That's that's pretty cool. All right. And and I mean, you know how many Star Wars fans there are out there and how many people are gonna be watching the archive. So like you play yeah, Darth Vader. Your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My dad will be going big right now. Um so going in. Well, you, you you played Darth Vader. You got a chance to actually hold the real, actual lightsaber. You know how many people want to want to do that? Like, do you actually know the lightsaber skills, or was there a stuntman that uh, did well, a lot of the? Two of us play the part as myself and Daniel Bruce. Daniel Bruce is a swordmaster, and he's the man. You know what I mean? He he did the iconic end scene and some other bits in the film. Uh, I could do the other scenes, um, uh, but you know the, the the corridor scene is like you know what I mean? It's pretty special. You know what I mean? It's a one man for the job, and that was that. He was uh, incredible, and he's a uh, him and his sister Camilla. They are, are ho uh, horse trick riders as well. If you ever heard of the Devil's Horseman? Watch their stuff. It's absolutely incredible. I'm blowing your mind off. We we got uh, our relationship started back here on the Wolfman because I play the Wolfman in the Wolfman, and uh, I'm good friends with Nina. They were very good. They control all the horse horse uh, work in the industry. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we do a relationship there. So, uh, but Dan, Dan, me and Dan play the part of Darth Vader, and the fans are very happy with what we what we brought, which is all good. And you know, I was forty three films in Land Invader, and uh, I said, you know, they say he's the most iconic bad guy on silver screen. Well, I question that, but then when the character's spirit, the real presence of spirit of Darth Vader took over me, I got it. <laughs> then, he took, then he demands respect. You're working for the emperor, and that is, you do as you're told. Do you know what I mean? And there, there's a there's another question we had in the, from from an email that came in. Um, you know, you don't do the voice of Darth Vader, but you were the so <laughs> you were the actual character be inside of the outfit behind the mask, right? Yeah, what, what they do, they give them, if 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 there's another actor voicing the character, they'll give you a di an additional dialogue. You know, so they gave me additional dialogue when you see Darth Vader walking through the steam for the first time, and he has a big confrontation with them. You know, Krennic. Uh, so, but when I get into my characters, a voice, the movement, everything comes with it, you know? Obviously, they tweak the movement here and there. Paul Casey, the movement, co movement coordinator, and he's a brilliant actor and performer himself. He, uh, he adjusted our gait a little bit, because if you're off a little bit with your gait, there's a fan that's going to go, oi, that's a different world there. You know what I mean? So he's a, such an iconic character, but there's a warm presence and spirit of that character, and he will take over the actor who he's playing, or the other way around. Uh, thank you. Thank you for ex explaining that. And I see Megan Henry joined. Uh, I Actually, Megan's a pretty big speaker. I just met her at the UCLA when I when I spoke there, so I'm glad to see Hi, Megan. How are you? See you, Megan. And then uh, um, uh, Brian, I, I met at the UCLA as well. Shout out to Blue Talks LA. Um, uh, even so, so Brian said, even as an already accomplished actor, were you anxious to just being inside of the outfit? Well, it was a very, very secretive audition in the beginning. There were several self tapes first before we even got to the final audition. So at the time, my first audition, my agent ran me up and said, Spam, we've got a cell tape in. I went, yeah, yeah, what's it for? And we went, we don't know. And we really don't know. Well, that's a bit strange. He said, just, just come in, Spam, just roll with it. I went, all right, in. So we got it to where uh, I got to the um, acting workshop in my agency, and they said, Let, they want to see some guy walking around with authority. So right. So I just walked around with authority. And then they called me back a week later. So we've got another cell tape in. So we've got a bit of dialogue now. I went, all right, in. Okay, um, do we know who it is yet? Nope, still don't know who it is. So it's very strange for an actor, and you know, he's been in the game for what, 17, no, how, how long has it been out for now? Six, seven years. So I've been in the game 14, 15 years, you know, and we would never heard this. And I've in, in 43 films or shows, whatever, we've never heard of you not knowing who the character is, you don't know what the production is, this, that, and the other. It's so secretive. You know, they don't want any secrets out. So on the third callback, we did the dialogue, and then then we now we know it's Star Wars, right? And I said to my agent, I've got a funny feeling this is Darth Vader. And he goes, no, no, it's not. He goes, no, it is. And he goes, why did you say that? Because I said that every, every line, he's going, <sighs> little bit, man. Uh. Right, so don't give it your day, day just, but So, yeah, so then, then the last audition was at Pinewood Studios. Right, and when we got to Palmer Studio, I've filmed in Palmer Studios lots of times, you know. 
But when we got there, when I got out of the car, they put a towel over me. I said, Ben, there's press at the gate. Don't worry about it. Because obviously they, the, the word's out who's auditioning for Darth Vader. I'm sure they've gone around for many galaxies to, to put the actor in the suit who's going to get that. So that's when the real presence and spirit came to me on that last audition. You know, literally he took over me. You know, we scared some people in that room. And I just stepped step back and let him do his thing. And uh, it was, it was uh, we met each other there. The actor Spen, and Darth Vader, the, the, the presence of spirit, we connected. And then a couple of days later, the phone goes and and, and it was Joe, my agent at the time. I've got Joe and Darren at Morello. And uh, Joe's moved on to different passages now, but Darren's still there, strong. And he said, uh, Joe said, oh, yeah. I said, oh, well, have you heard then? And he goes, oh, yeah, 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 you'd have got the job. I went, why are you being so calm? It's Darth Vader. Come on. Our worlds are going to change a little bit here. Do you know what I mean? Although I've done a lot of iconic characters, but Darth Vader, man, he takes the, he takes the cake, doesn't he? This is, it's a big one. And, 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 but, you know, yeah, going off of, um, and by the way, great, great question, uh, uh, Brian. Um, going off of the fact that you said you've done a lot of, a lot of characters and actually a uh, question from Wendy is, uh, and if you guys look at the, look at the screen, I mean, you've done so, so much, but she was asking about guardians of the galaxy. And yeah, yeah. I know, I know there's a lot of guardians of the galaxy fans, uh, out there and, and Groot. Yeah, I am Groot. Uh, you know, is one of the cool, cool characters. Diesel, and, what'd you say? I'm Diesel played I'm Groot, isn't he? Then Diesel? Diesel? Sure. Yeah. Was the voice. I, I think I think I think he was the uh, the voiceover, but um, you know what what was your what your most memorable moment in playing with that? I mean, you you played with a lot of iconic uh, actors, a lot of iconic actors. So, well, not, what, what, not many people know this, but that wasn't the original audition character I went for. You know, the original character. Do you remember? In, uh, you know, if you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy One, you'll remember this scene. They go take you down to the showers. The users clean up the blood down there. Right, they wanted me to play that guy, and they changed on the eleventh hour. They went, no, no, we're going to give him the main guard instead, which worked out fine. You know what I mean? I'm sure, I would have been happy for any character, but the main guard, he was, um, he was mean, and he was a guard, you know. And when they got brought onto the, onto the prison, the actors, uh, the guys, you know, Star Lord, Star Prince, whatever you want to call him, Chris Pratt, he's a great guy. You know, he, he, he was, he was a good sport, and. Um, so they said to me, he goes, right, you know, they said, what, 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 what do you want you to do? You're going to be listening to the music for the first time. Uh, Star Lord's going to come in. Uh, the door's going to shut behind him. And he's going to say a few things to you. And you're just going to get beep. And he's going to go over with your lactic prod. And you're going to give him a two, twice. I got a third one in. I still put it away. I went, oh, you're getting a third one. You know what I mean? But it was great. And and if you haven't seen the deleted, uh, deleted uh, Blu-ray scenes, uh, if you, you know, you, you can see it on YouTube or whatever, you'll see it somewhere. There's six deleted Blu ray, uh, six deleted scenes for the Blu ray, and you actually see the mean guard dance through the prison, you know. Because I remember on the last day, one of the last filming days, Mr. James Gunn came up to me and he goes, Spen, I was in the trailer, that, you know, sometimes, sometimes they don't get to you if they're, they're a bit behind, but you're on a film, it's all positive. So, any actors out there, don't lose your. Don't lose your mind if you're stuck in the trailer all day and they don't get to you. Listen, you're on the job. You're being paid, mate. It's all good, you know? <laughs> so they were all like about a half, half an hour away from going to overtime. And they wanted to do this scene. They said to me, Jane, Mr. James goes, listen, we want you to come and uh, we want you to listen to the music for the first time. Do a bit of dancing. You know, you're in the prison. And then go and be mean to one of the prisoners. I said, do you think you can get that? In half an hour, I said, yeah, no problem. You know what I mean? So they brought me on to set, and uh, James was there, and he had all his furry friends on his, on his his sitting on the seat behind the monitor. He goes, right, you got this, better, so you have no problem. So we did it, you know? I put the, they go, do you, want it, do you want it listening, the music through just the headphones, or do you want everybody to listen to it? on the? Because it was a huge stage. No blue screen now. It was a huge set. And um, so there was everybody in there. I said, well, I want everybody to feel what I'm feeling, so play it through the room. So it won't look like just some guy just having a dance, you know what I mean? Let them feel it, you know? So we did it. Uh, and then so I was dancing through the prison as, you know, and executed the, the, the prisoner there, being really mean to her, and I carried on. And then he went, cut. 
when there was a deadly silence for me. You know, that deadly silence, and everybody goes, Whoa! So, whenever I dance for real, people laugh because I look like, you know, I'm having a fit or something. But, <laughs> but anyway, I'm six foot eight, man, big guy. So, um, yeah, so we did it, and Mr. James Gunn goes, Listen, Sven, that was great, but it was too good. Do you think you could dance like an alien? And I, so I tuned in to the alien and give him a dance, and that's what they use for the special deleted scenes. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, this is this is awesome. A really cool behind the scenes. By the way, guys, just so you know, um, you can get connected to Spencer. And Spencer, you're going to get connected to our audience, our Easyway family, if they if they reach out to you on the Easyway Wall of Fame and on your your actual uh, Easyway I profile. You guys can actually message Spencer directly if we if you didn't get any questions in today. And you can, you know, I mean, a lot of a lot of our members have podcasts, and you guys might want to have Spencer on your podcast. I don't, I don't know, but that is something that we do, uh, you know, do with Easy Talk Live is is you get to actually connect and interact with Spencer. So if they do reach out to you, Spencer, are you going to reach back out to him? Oh yeah, I'm sure. If we, if, we, if you know, if there's a unless there's a disturbance in the force, then I'm sure. <laughs> The force is strong with this one. Um, all right, so we have uh, uh, Wendy is saying, "What is your favorite role, Ben?" That's a great, great, great. I mean, to ask someone like Spencer, it, it, I mean, as an established actor, as much as he's done, guys. For I mean, look at look at his resume. I mean, look. I mean, first and foremost, before your favorite role, what is your most favorite project? I guess I guess it would be it would be role, but you've done so much. I mean, I don't even know how you know, I'm not trying to get out of that answer at all. I, I, you know, I do get that asked that. I do a lot of comic cons and conventions all over the world when uh, when I'm not filming, and uh, I get that question asked a lot. And I, and I haven't got a favorite one. They're all a gift. I'm like that. And they're all a gift, man. And uh, so every character I've got love for. You know, you know, there's a martial arts green screen. Love a bit of that. Monsters, you know, Wolfman, Frankenstein, you know, the Doctor Who's, Game of Thrones, all them lot, love all that, you know. But so every character, it, the guy, I was the guy that burned down Batman's house in Batman Begins. I was League of the Shadow Warrior One. That was my second show, and I was working on Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I was number one Vogan soldier in that. Lots of funny stories about that show as well. We've got so much. I mean, the show's not long enough for, for us to talk about all that. <laughs> it's literally every there's a story in every character you know but i'm just i'm just very grateful and i feel very blessed to to live this dream another dream it's very hard to catch one dream in a life i caught two you know i get out of bed every day and say thank you very much you know what i mean it's one of that mm -hmm. i i your power of appreciation exactly and um but i mean especially i mean this we, we really appreciate you making the making the time uh today to to, to join us and answer all these questions and you know but i want to i want to get into um in fact let's go to commercial break guys we're going to be right back uh but when we come back we're going to get into how you book roles as an actor the how-to side of things uh if you're wanting to be an actor or even a speaker uh but we'll get into all that pretty soon and we will be right back this is easy talk live with spencer wilding i'm eric zuli stay tuned are you ready to scale your business and grow your income Life is a journey. You've got to discover your true path and target your results. Don't just dream about it. You've got to do it. At WealthXO, we're here to help you create your dream life. Turn your dreams into a reality. It all starts with a great plan and a great coach. I'm Dr. Dante Sears, and I'm here to help you turn your dreams into reality. Are you ready? Let's go. WealthXO. The Better Vision for Children's Foundation was founded over 35 years ago by Tom Cataldo, a World War II Navy veteran and who eventually lost most of his eyesight due to amblyopia. Amblyopia, also known as lazy eye, is an early childhood condition in which the eye and brain don't work together as they should. Kids often get used to this vision problem and might not mention it to parents. As a result, their amblyopia might not get diagnosed for months or even years, while parents chalk up poor grades or clumsiness to a child not being academically or athletically gifted. And we're back. Go to bvccharity.org, guys, if you want to support. And when you do support our causes, we support you with marketing. Remember that. Uh, coming back with Spencer Wilding, uh, you know, there was a, there was a, you were mentioning about uh, Comic-Cons and, and uh, appearances and stuff that you do. I want to remind everybody that uh, you are going to be doing an appearance at the Morphicon 
in Anaheim coming up, uh, booth 1437. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit, a little bit about that? Yeah, it's another comic con, and I get to meet uh, meet the fans, man. I'm a fan of the fans, and some of the cos cosplayers they work on it all year. You know, I remember the first comic con I did in America. It was in a uh, Monster Mania in Philadelphia, uh, and I'd never done a. I didn't like done like one and that was in like in what was that 2010 something like that. And I, my comic cons were in the UK. I didn't. It was the first time I had a chance to come to America. And meet the fans over there and it was just after the wolfman um and i remember i was at the bar and i turned around because i felt somebody tap me and it was little one the name's little one and she turned around and she was dressed as the wolfman and you could it looked like she just walked off the set as the wolfman you could not tell the difference and she's and i said what glue do you use oh i've glued this fur to my face and blah 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 but i'll stay in it now for three days I'm like what when your skin must fall off so that's some 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 of these um cosplayers are die hard you know but it was incredible for that was that was that was picture ready that you could you could you could have used her as a wolf man it's incredible yeah <laughs> Just remind you guys to be interactive and make sure you go to easywayi.com and uh, create your free account to get connected with people like Spencer Wilding and so many amazing other uh, uh, speakers and, and actors. And that's another question we had from an email that came in, Spencer, is do you do speaking engagements? And and if if so, uh, if they reach out to you on EasyWay, uh, can they book you as a, as, a, as a, I mean, I know you do signings and stuff, but are you a professional speaker or do you just do... I've done a lot of talks, you know, they obviously come from my agent, the acting agent, stuff like that, um, my parents' agency. Um, and, you know, I'm sure we'll have a chat as well, Eric. So, um, but I do, I go around the schools. I've been doing, I'm the painter at Bantu Bullion back home. Uh, and I'd like to be a president of a, a dyslexia as well. At the end of the day, you know, I played a lot of powerful, you know, powerful characters then. So mm. I it's dyslexic, mate. You know what I mean? It's one of them. Uh, so I do a lot of talks on the schools. So I, I do, you know, obviously we'll get to, get to talk uh, for a period and I'll tell you what the fear is and blah, 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 blah. But I do go around all around the world doing talk oh, for the schools. Awesome. Well, thank you for, for letting us know that. And and uh, Better Vision for Children does get involved with a lot of those types of causes and stuff. So uh, we'll make sure that we get uh, you in touch with uh, the president and, and the board of that. And I know that we chat a little bit about supporting, supporting that, but that's great that you support. So if you guys... Uh, know anybody that has an organization that supports dyslexia or you are dealing with that, you know, you might want to reach out to, to Spencer. Um, so, so Spencer, you, you also did a lot. And this is, I know you've done so many other roles and characters and, and especially the uh, game of Thrones. I know that's a really, really big one. And that's going to be my last, you know, acting question. And then we're going to get into how you got these roles and, and the how to side of things. So, Game of Thrones, who was your character and what did you do in Game of I was Thrones? The first White Walker. I was White Walker 2. Ian White was White Walker 1. They were just the cast names at the time on the very first episode of Game of Thrones. That was one of the more, more popular TV series and stuff. And and um, what was your most memorable moment on, on that? And and I know you play with a, a lot of major other actors. Yeah, um, you know, it was great. You know, a, lot of, a few friendships started on that job, uh, Bronson Webb. Uh, become stay good friends with Bronson. I've uh, known Ian for a good few years. We'll say hello on Comic Cons and stuff when when, when our paths cross. Uh, but um, yeah, I, my, my characters now and again they show off. Don't know why they just show off. So uh, and there was a funny story when they they basically there's a camera tracking me and Marnix and uh, not Marnix, me and Ian White running right. And then there's a couple of extras who are playing uh, White Walkers as well. So it's like four of us. So we're meaning one of the close up. And as the camera was tracking to me, it was, it, we filmed it in North Belfast. Uh, no, where was it? Belfast, Telemore. Yeah, in, in Belfast, in, in Ireland. And um, it was the summertime, but the set was dressed like snow. So it was all white paper everywhere, you know. But the, the set, the, the ground was a forest. It wasn't a studio, it was a forest. So, so it was dressed, but we were, we were running like, like hard socks, pumps. So you could feel all the sniggles under your feet. And there was a bit of a ditch 
and I was running like this, running through, running through, where are we running through? And the camera, as the camera caught up to me, I thought, right, I'm going to jump over this ditch, throw some shapes. Uh, the other three uh, performers had uh, ice swords in front. I'm going to turn around behind and make it look cool. So I threw a shape, nice profile shot there, got over the ditch, landed on a twig, fell back down with a frog on my head. That stopped me from showing off on that gig. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for thanks for sharing that. And uh, Jackie Harris, uh, so by the way, guys, press the share button. Tell your friends, please. Uh, you know, this is this is a great interview. This is one of my be better episodes for sure. What's up? What's your next project uh, uh, coming up? <laughs> is going to be the last fan <laughs> question, and then we're going to go into how the how to side of things. Yeah, the latest the latest show that came out was uh, it's, it wasn't out too too long ago. It's good. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, and then the one before that was uh, the Devil Conspiracy, and then we had obviously Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw, and many Black International. The next shows that come out now, I helped out on uh, Borderlands, I helped out on that, uh, but we need everybody shout nice and loud to get Toxic Avengers out, right? Because Toxic Avengers is it's going to be, I just it's not, it's not. Hopefully, it's not if it's when it comes out. Uh, Peter Dinklage is in it, and Kevin Bacon. I'm the NDA. I can't talk about the show, what's going on it. But, you know, I'm sure a lot of fans out there probably know a bit more than me, you know. But uh, we need it to come out. So that's the next show that I'm coming out. I'm in between jobs now. So uh, and when I get back to the UK, auditions will come through. Uh, sort my visas out. need some different visas to, to film in America. So uh, we'll, we'll, in a couple of years' time, I'll change them visas when the other visas run out. And then we'll see if we get some more work over here or, or wherever. I'm always working on American productions anyway, so it doesn't matter where you are. That's, that was a great question uh, by Jackie Harris. And, um, you know, wow, Toxic Avengers. That's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and who's going to be your character? Like, what's your involvement on that? Uh, I, can't, I can't say this. You may be uh, stuck okay. Okay. I don't want to get you in trouble. No, okay. I, won't, I, won't, I won't sell you anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm too long down the line for that one. I mean, we've got to keep the secrets. But it's going to be a great show. You know, I'm very well, excited. I've been very excited to see this show. Well, yeah. I will I will say that uh, you can find out everything on IMDb. So it, it does say your your character. If you guys want to want to look it up on IMDb, look up Spencer Spencer Wilding. But, uh, man, these stories have been, been incredible. And John Carr um, uh, is on here right now and he's the founder of the, uh, charitable giving foundation. It's actually an honor to have him, have him on. And he says, sorry, I have to leave, uh, to be interviewed. So now he's got to be interviewed, but he wanted to just say, say, Hey, I wanted to just uh, kind of highlight him there. Thanks for listening, John. Hopefully we'll meet one day, man. Take care. I hope, you, I hope you, your interview goes great. Yeah. So thank you so much for tuning, uh, tuning in, John. So, all right, Spencer, um, let's, let's get into, you know, guys, whenever you watch easy talk live and, and, and you see this, Easy Way Network presents your favorite stars from the positive paparazzi. We're doing it the easy way. That means it's time to get behind the carpet. It's time to really get the insightful information, the education that's needed. Uh, and and Spencer, you've been an actor for a long time. So, what would your advice be? when going into an audition, when getting the opportunity to, you know, book a role, what's the best way? I mean, you kind of said it, you kind of said it earlier today, you were, you be the character, like you turn into that character, right? Yeah, for sure. But, but, you know, my, uh, I used to, wow, well, well, in the beginning, because I was going for auditions, I couldn't even rewrite, you know what I mean? So I was crushing, crushing, crushing all the time. I was going for, and then it was, it was, it was, I was singing to myself, well, I've been told in my head that I'm going to be an actor, but I can't even read or write. I never, I'm just getting closed down everywhere. I mean, the doors are shutting in my face everywhere. And then the phone went quiet for over a year, you know, and then I got in another way. But all I can say is, obviously, when you're going for an audition, you're able to read and write. I mean, the, I, how I got in was just, I had the gods on my side, man. Uh, so it was one of them. Uh, but you've won already. You've got an audition. You know what I mean? There's, there's thousands of actors out there that can't even get an audition. So take that positivity in the room, right? And and once you've done your job, you've gone in there, live and breathe it, and seal that room up, 
do the audition, become that character. And when you come out of there, then forget about it. Don't sit there when you were waiting at the phone, blah, 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 waiting that. No, 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 no. Just forget about it. You've done your job. The phone goes, it goes. But be thick skinned. Because if you don't get it, right, and you're thinking, oh, no, that's it. Get in the world. Never going to get a job again. Yeah, you know, the phone will go again. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Just don't worry about it. Stay positive. Stay in the light. And, uh, and just when you've done your audition, if you think you've messed it up or you don't mess it up or everything, just keep positive and be friendly and smile. Because one day, a year down the line, casting agents have really good memories, right? So when you go in there and they might not think of you for that one, you might not get that one, but in a year's time, they might go, do you remember that Spencer come here? Really friendly, positive. Didn't get the job, but oh, we like him. Let's get him in for this one. They'll remember. You know what I mean? And that one might have your name on it, right? So when it's all confidence building, all confidence building, you're winning. Just go into the audition. That's great. Congratulations for getting the audition. And if you get the part, well done. Smash it. Great, great advice. So, I mean, I would uh, say uh, manifest it and and know you already got it. You know, go in, go in there, and and just know that's your role, that's your character. Like when I got, I was a, the face of Axe Body Spray. It was a big, it was close to the Super Bowl. It was a big international commercial, one of the biz, biggest auditions that I booked. But I was a rapper. I'm actually a freestyle rapper. I don't know if you knew that, Spence, but I, I didn't know that. But I did. I did an audition, and you probably don't know this either. I did an audition for Super Bowl in America in 2010. You did? You know oh, wow. oh, no, I didn't know that. Well, do you know, sorry for cutting in you there. They come back oh. to your because I love all that stuff. Vanilla Ice, man. I like to start a collaborate and listen. Ice and with a brand new edition, something. Grab a hold of me tight and all that. Love all that stuff. <laughs> you know I mean? My first dance is a running man. <laughs> <laughs> we all loved him. So, yeah, I got uh, an audition. Uh, through uh, the first one, the first agency I was been working with, it, it was Sports Workshop. And uh, they had basically, I was the champion of the UK, so I was the kickboxer. And then they'd have a top um, basketball player or a hockey player, and there was a gang of us. Do you remember the Monty Python, Quest for Holy Grail? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so this is Quest for Holy G, Gatorade advert. So every time it'd go to uh, the interview, uh, the, the game, the not the interview, the uh, commercials, there'd be, uh, do you remember the Jabberwockies? Yeah, of course. Dance -off. I was having a dance-off with the Jabberwockies, do you know what I mean? So it was great. And I was playing one of the French hecklers on top of their castle going, women do not belong on a man's quest, and there's a pony, and all that. You know, you smell like, sh you know, whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? So we filmed that in Ronda uh, in Spain. And then it was really, really funny because they flew me over to America for the reshoots for, for, for the Wolfman. But they were having the Wolfman, uh, the Wolfman uh, reshoots back in the Palmer Studios. So it was just to meet the stunt team, the new stunt team, to make sure to make sure we all gelled and that they were happy with me and I was happy with them and everybody was happy and everyone was great, you know what I mean? But um yeah it was it was uh yeah it was crazy man. It was good. You know, you, you mentioned the Jabba walkies. I, I I go way back in the uh, in the in the dancing oh, world. Yeah. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to yeah. pop this on for the for the audience. Uh, you know, I I love dancing. I I love to be a performer. Yeah, I've um, seen you. I've checked you out, man. I've seen you doing your dancing. Your body, oh, yeah. and all that. It's great. Yeah. So when I was at, well, go back to that question. I'm in there. When I was down at Ocean Del Rey, I was at a bar down there, and I was out with all the stunt boys, and we'd had a few drinks. You know what I mean? And we were in the party zone, and. Uh, and I was saying to them, as the drinks were going down, I said, has anybody seen the Super Bowl adverts yet? Because I was on, like, game two or something. Every time I go to game one, then a, a different scene would come up, a different scene. Our scene was on two. You can check it out on YouTube, Quest for Holy Grail. Uh, it's funny. It's about nine minutes long, the advert, but you can watch my second one. Right, I'll come on second one. It's funny. So I was down at Ocean Del Rey, and I'd asked this question, have you seen the Super Bowl adverts? Has anybody seen this? And I just wanted to see see what I looked like. You know I mean, how did I come across? Most actors want to check out their work, you know? And uh, they went, no, no, I haven't seen it. And it was about three hours into the night out, and there was a huge television screen. Then all of a sudden, all the boys went, spare your TV, and they turned around. And then I was being the French heckler. I was like, oh, yeah, yes. You know what I mean? I was in Hollywood. I was in Hollywood, and that was going off. That was great. Kid from real. Yeah, yeah I love it.
And so, so, uh, so we have a couple more guys. I'm going to get to your questions in a, in a second, but I, I want to ask you, Spence, I know you've probably been on a lot of red carpets, probably more than you can, can remember. What, what's a fun red carpet story that you could share with us that, that, you know, a fun one. I just, you know what? I've walked up many, you get a few pictures, you say hello and, and go and enjoy the film. Well, you know, like you, when you're on a carpet, you 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 meet. I mean, hanging out with Chris Hemsworth uh, or any other stars that you've seen, yeah. or like any well, fun I'm red carpet there. stories. I, I, I'm really close to Gigi Edgley over here. We do a lot of comic cons together, and uh, and she's really cool, and she looks after me over here. Do you know what I mean? And sh sh we did. We went to that Godzilla one. That was fun. You know what I mean? We went to that premiere. That was cool. Um, and when the family back home. Uh, we went. We've done. I've done a lot of comic cons back home with Joe, uh, and my kids have been. My kids haven't been to any comic cons yet, but uh, but uh, I think. What, what, what about a comic con story? I mean, you've probably done a bunch of signings. What? what any fan stories you could share with us? And either, you know, one of the yeah, events. Yeah, I, I remember some, some really. But I've had listen. Fully grown men come to the table and fall on the floor and cry, not because I was singing or anything. It was just they just get so emotional. Some fans do. Um, and some fans don't. I just, you know, I, I, I like going to the comic cons to to, 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 not just to sign the pictures for them. I like to hear some stories off the fans as well. You know, when I go to do the Q and A's, I like to find out how long their cosplay cost. Uh, you know, not how much it costs. It probably costs a lot, quite a lot of wages. But how long it took them to make that? You know, because I know for that one day a year when they go to that comic con, they're their star. They're their own star. You know, their work, well, you know, and I've worked with, well, I've worked with, I've been, I, I spoke to a few cosplayers and they've had mums and dads of them and they, they won't come out of the bedroom. They'll only come out of the bedroom in the costume. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, there's something going on and it's just, I think Comic Cons are pretty special really that way. It, it used to be just for geeks, but it's for everybody now. You know, I've never come across a negative uh, energy in a Comic Con. It's just all positive. If you if you want to gain more followers on social media, connect with the Comic Con groups. You right. know what I mean? Connect with all those uh, the, the 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 fans. Man, they are crazy numbers on on social media. And and I've I've actually tapped into a couple groups on 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 Facebook about you. And and we'll do it. We'll do another. We'll do another Easy Talk Live. And and we'll 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 do more on the on the. The fan favorites type of stuff, but we have another question as well from uh, Brian Grossman. A great question, actually. Um, so, from your experience, do you ever have to audition to be a speaker like you do as an actor? And can you share some tips as a, as two speakers competing for gigs? Yeah, I've never I've never been to an audition to be a speaker. You know. Uh, that sort of thing, I I am looking to myself to. I'll get in touch where the schools are. I'll go, might go around some American air bases or you know some army army places and just check out the families and say hello and share my love back. You know what I mean? Because I'm a supporter of the army and the air base. I have all that. Because uh, then the day they're giving their lives up to keep us safe, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? I'm really well myself, and I've got a lot of very very close friends who are ex SAS and this that and the other. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, so I've never been asked to be a guest speaker. So I'll 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 get into my my agency is uh, is uh, my parents' agency. It's called uh, the Beast Within Productions USA. So and Stacy, we're but we're business partners, and uh, Gigi gets the shows as well. And so I've got a lot of love around me that helps us out. Do you know what I mean? You're uh, you're pointing to Gigi. Is is she there with you or something? Like uh, uh, she's in another room. Do you know what I mean? So if you should have her come in and say hello and 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 <laughs> say hi to these with family. Yeah, uh, she's also a big established actress, and hopefully we'll be able to get her get her on the yeah, show. Sometime. She's got her own thing going on. It's just that yeah. I think that'll be a, a call for you to have her bring on. She's she's an actor as well. She's done a lot of stuff. Yeah, no, I look forward to chatting with her for, for sure. So so um again, we we we've had a couple people actually uh, uh, DMing us. We have people on LinkedIn, people on Facebook, people uh, on. On YouTube, we got people watching on, on on Roku, and actually a lot of people are are messaging on Easy Way I right now, uh, which I want to encourage you guys to go to EasyWayI.com and create your free account and reach out to Spencer and message him, and uh, you know if if we if we don't get a chance to get to your your questions uh, to today, but my next question, Spence, is is 
Do you mind if I call you Spence, by the way? I'm just kind of like being. Oh, well, you can call me whatever you want, mate. I mean, I've been, I've been answered to a lot of things in my time. I mean, we're at nightclubs as well, so all sorts of things here. But no, my nickname is Big Spen. You know what I mean? Big Spen. Oh, okay, Big well, there Spen. it is. Spence, is. Spanish, Spanish, but whatever you want to call me. Do you know what I mean? Appreciate it. So if you could go back in time and, and for, for one, what point in time would you go back to? And two, what would you tell yourself to make a change in your life? Um, never, really, never really spoke about this ever. This is probably a question that this is an answer nobody's ever heard me say. Um, if I could go back in time, wouldn't change anything, but I remember I was working on a, a film called Aragon, right, in Budapest. And my, my son, Bobby Joe, was three weeks old when I left, right? And when, um, when I got to see him, he was eight months old. So I got a bit down on that film, when, and I lived over a casino, believe it or not. And I went into this casino, and I won like five or six grand. I went, oh my God, what's that? And then the next day, because I got lonely and I was a bit down, that Joe wouldn't bring him over, and I was on a six-day week, and it was just one of them, you know, because you know, to travel over to, to, over to a different country, bring your kids, it's quite a, a lot to ask of the mum, do you know what I mean? And she had her life going on as well, so it was just one of them. And uh, and, Bob, and George was like two years old, and I and the gambling got hold of me, and I got really down on myself, and I I, I so if, if I could go back to myself there, I'd I'd not have gone into that casino because I know I would have given my family a better life. You know what I mean? It's a bit of a heavy one, really. But I don't don't really gamble anymore now. But but it, it was in a big part of my life. So if I advise to any kids. You know, there's a lot of gambling sites out there probably hate me, but don't gamble. Waste of time, mate. It's only one winner. And they'll take your money. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's the way it is. They don't take your money. If you can control it and have a little bit of fun once a week, different thing. But but once it gets older, you, 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 you know, you're gonna it's going to take all your savings. Do you know what I mean? Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, and and I, I believe that was an exclusive story. And, and it was no, always very exclusive, yeah. And so um, I want to also encourage everybody. You saw we were putting it on earlier, but uh, you can follow Spencer on I IG and on, uh, Instagram, uh, Spencer Wilding. You can follow Easy Way Family if you want to be a part of the community and, and follow everything that we have going on at uh, Easy Way Family. And then Easy Way TV, we're actually doing a whole lot of interviews. So if you want to be interviewed or you want to check out some interviews and, 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 and meet some people, learn some things, go to Easy Way TV. Um, but Spencer, we met through the K Coven situation. Uh, Catherine Coven Pacino. I want to, I want to give some props and, and appreciation to uh, Catherine, who is one of our clients, one of our, our our higher profile members, and we we really appreciate her and Craig Muckler. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're both, they're both sweethearts. They're really beautiful people. You know what I mean? I really, really hope I get to work with Craig because he's been going on about this uh, ripped to shreds for for several years. And you know, he, he would like me to play. Uh, I don't know if I can say that. I don't know if I'm an MDB to say that. You know, what I mean, MDB to be an aid to it, but whatever, 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 whatever. But um, let's see. Hopefully, um, it'll, it'll, Craig will talk about that. You know what I mean? And he'll, uh, if, if, if they can get the funding, if they can get the budget together and bring me on, then I'd uh, smash it for Craig. And Craig I look forward. Craig. Look forward to it. I know I know that Craig is an established filmmaker and and yeah. um and so we 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 also got you a, P, a K Coven piece. I uh, think it was like a saber tooth kind of tooth or it was a wolf yeah, yeah, yeah. wolf necklace or, or whatever. And and again, this is uh kcoven.com uh, that you guys are looking at. If you guys want to take a look at the uh, at the at the pieces, uh, they're beautiful and nice. And you might see uh Spencer get more and more involved here. But uh what do you what did you think of that uh, of that piece? So you are you rocking it a lot? And and which one did you choose, the the wolf one or the saber tooth one? Well, it's it's like it's, it's like a it, it's like the, the the wolf tooth, you know. It's uh, it's I like it, I love it, but I only wear it on special occasions. You know what I mean? Look, I, a little I, bit I, of I wear this one daily. This I love given, it. This this is given off me from Scott Johnson. We're like brothers from other other mothers. He uh, he does a lot of work. Uh, he's a police officer over in uh, Saint Port Saint Lucie in Florida, and um, he trains all the SWAT. And, he, and they've, they've been, I've done a lot of charity work over the years for the guys, and they've just become family, man. And um, you know, I'm a bit of a fighter. Been a bit naughty in my past, 
probably been banged in itself. Nothing bad for just for fighting. Never have still got a clean record, but when you work the doors and stuff, you get into fights. Um and so I know the good, the bad and the ugly, but everybody leaves me alone and I, I have my path and I leave, leave my footsteps. And uh but they're the good the good guys who fight for the good. And uh, and I'm I'm all about that. You know what I mean? Well, speaking speaking of fighting, and we don't have a, enough time to really get into this, but we'll we'll definitely have you back. Uh, but you were a fighter as well. I mean, you 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 did you did your thing in the in the ring, and and uh, you you do you want to talk a little bit about about is, is this the right video? Is that you or this, no? This is a special video. This is because uh, Kerry Walker. Uh, it, it comes up Terry Walker, but it's Kerry Walker. Kerry Walker's about 18, 19 stone. Here. I'm fourteen stone. Uh, I become friends. I didn't get to meet Kerry in person again after this fight, but we 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 check in once or twice in a year and say hello. He's a brilliant musician, but he actually died uh, three or four weeks ago, and he's a fit guy, man. He looked he looked a lot fitter than he is here, and I was a fit big guy here, but that he was he was uh, one of the hardest fighters I had had to, had the pleasure to fight with after nineteen fights after several years of fighting. Uh, I was a Welsh British European kick, but I didn't get my European belt. But I, I, I beat him. But I beat the world champion several times. Uh, mm. Kevin Smiles, the world champion. Simon Dawes, the world champion. Probably one, probably the hardest fight was Arjun and the Beast Fraser from Trinidad and Tobago. And he's in the Hall of Texas fame of martial arts. Check him out. I don't even know if he's still alive or not. I don't know. But I fought him 20 years ago in Deeside Leisure Centre in North Wales. I broke all my toes, both ankles and my left leg in that fight. Uh, wow. Yeah, I couldn't get out of the showers after the fight. I was shaking so much. And Steve, one of my trainers, Stephen Goodwin, because I went into I went to pro boxing after that fight. And um, one, maybe one or two more fights after that. And then I went come back to the kickboxing, but I did pro boxing for two and a half years. And Steve come into the into the showers, into the lads' showers room. He goes, Spenny, all right. Because I wasn't coming out. And I said, Steve, I can't stop shaking, mate. And what it was, I'd broken that many bones. Although I won the fight, smashed him. I mean, but I limped back to that shower. Uh, the marrow was coming out of the bone, and so it was poisoning me. So I couldn't stop shaking. So mm -hmm. uh, that, that was a good few weeks to recover after that fight. But what a hard man. Orange the beast phrase was. I put him down a few times. But I was a vicious kicker, vicious puncher. And he was five foot seven, I was six foot seven. Uh, I put another inch on since that fight, believe it or not. And so I'm six eight now. But I was kicking him square into the face, and I've got a hard kick, right? But I couldn't put him away. Couldn't put, could not put him away. But it must have been a sore playing man back home because I was sore. But, but black guys, are, I think, are harder and tougher than white guys myself. I really do. Because the, the black guys that I fought, it's like fighting the snowball. I mean, it's like just super, super hard. So we had a we had a, a question from the audience on celebrity boxing, but actually, I wanted to ask you: that, Are you going to be fighting again? Is there any possible way that we're, we're going to see you in the ring any any way? Or well, I don't know. You know, I've, I had a bit of neck, neck injury, but I've had an MRI and it's and I've had it all clear. If I if I do these stretching exercises with the machine they've got. Then uh, when I've got a bit of a bulging disc and it'll just pull it back in. But I sort of I sort of broke my neck when I was filming on Batgirl, swam into a wall. Mm. And, uh, and so I, I was, but the, then I had a funny way anyway, I won't go into that. But uh, but yeah, so and, I've, and that was a couple of years ago and I've had pain there ever since. But I've had the MRI now. Uh, and I was, it was so nice of a, uh, uh, it, was, it was only a couple of weeks ago I had, I had it done. I was over in uh, a Comic Con in the States in uh, Colorado Springs, and, and this guy came over to the table. I won't mention his name because uh, I don't know if I can. Uh, but he uh, he he came over to the table and he said, "I spent we met a few years ago." And there's so that many people coming in and out of my head. I just got, don't remember ninety percent of the people that come come through to the table. But he was a great guy, and I said, "What do you do? You, you, you you're pretty special. I can feel you're very intelligent. You've got, you've got, you've got what's going on." And he's an MRI doctor for the military, and uh, and I went, I went, wait there, wait there. I said, "What are the chances of getting me in the base?" You know, to and he goes, "Oh, it's too much protocol that's then." But I'll get back to you the next day later. He got back to me, and they got a little space for for this hospital. I won't say in case they get anybody in trouble. So, so they got me in, and they had I had an MRI, <clears throat> and um, 
and it showed where I damaged the C7, you know what I mean? And uh, But it's fixable, you know what I mean? So I did a bit of a bulging disc. So I've got this little device that pulls me out head up for 15 minutes a day. And I said, well, after that, if I ever got back in the ring, do you think I'll be all right? He goes, yeah, you just got to send the neck up. So you never know. You know, I'm not saying no, I'm not saying yes. That's to be continued. To be continued, exactly. And that guys, might, that might yeah. happen one day. You never know. But if I did, if I got myself fighting fit, I would, I would prefer to get in with an AJ or a Titan Fury. I have that one last fight with one of them boys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't take me out. I don't care. Just to get back in the room and to, to be back in that ring to be fighting fit. And get in with such legend champions and to get in there with them and give them a couple of rounds before they knock me out. Give them a couple of rounds and you never know. I might get lucky and knock them out. You just never know. Big Spend might come back. But, but it'd, it'd, be just, it'd be just be an honour to get in there and and fight world-class fighter at 51 well, years old. I'm, I'm good friends with uh, Damon, the owner of Celebrity Boxing, and they do some really big, large fights. I'm going to definitely tell them, tell them, tell them about you. And oh, yeah. I well, let's see what happens if they, you know, get fighting fit. Let's see if the purse is ready. If you want to see Darth Vader fight one of the boys, get the old millions on the go. Hey. Yeah. Let's see what it goes like. Because I know the 50 characters I played, if I got back in that ring, I'd want the right trainers around me. I want to be looked after and be the best that I could be to get in that mm -hmm. ring in six months' time or whatever. Because I know Darth Vader, all these characters I've played, they'll pull in a lot of... Oh, Whatever with Paul Jake, but at the end of the day, he's pulled a lot of people in that didn't even know about boxing to watch boxing. So he's good for the sport. He's good. Oh, for I hope Tyson kicks his ass, but it is what it is. He's <laughs> good for the sport, and that's it because he's bringing yeah. a lot of people in. Well, so this has been uh, amazing, uh, Spencer. And again, guys, uh, go to easytalkpodcast.com and subscribe. Uh, we're going to be doing another uh, – we're definitely going to be bringing Spencer back. And if you want to be interviewed, that is how you get your chance to be interviewed. Uh, so make sure you subscribe. And this has been – a great behind the scenes interview. And, and uh, you know, if you guys want to get connected to Spencer and, and have this continue, uh, go to uh, easywaynetwork.com and, and then create your free account and look up Spencer and then shoot him a message. You can connect with uh, Spencer and, and uh, get directly connected. And uh, I, I appreciate your time, Spencer. I, I mean, it was, it was awesome. I hope you, how, so before we let you go, how was your first official easy way experience? what do you think of easy talk live? Well, you're a great guy. I've, you know, I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of podcasts and I love your professionalism. Do you know what I mean? And you've got good energy and I've enjoyed our talk. I've, you know, I've done quiet with the podcasts, not through that, not through, I've, I've turned down, I've done that many. I've been like, oh, listen, you know, go just whatever you need on YouTube, go and check them out. Do you know what I mean? But um, this is a great, great, great interview. Uh, and uh, my big, my big, uh, what's it called? My big break, pod, my big break, almost. Great, another podcast to go and listen to. It's a great, great podcast to listen to. But this one's great. And I've been checking some of your stuff out, which is awesome. Uh, so thanks for being great with me. And if there's any kids listening out there, um, just follow your dreams. Be careful crossing the road and eat your sprouts. Are you a speaker, author, coach, entrepreneur looking to get out there more and find new leads for your business? Meet Amy. Amy is a coach and speaker looking to get on more stages and podcast interviews so more people know about her products and services, so people are aware of what she can do for them. Amy heard about this Easy Way Pitch Party on Zoom and decides to check it out. She registers at EasyWayPitchParty.com for free. Amy is now given an account with Easy Way Network and can log into her back-end portal. Amy discovers that there is a wide range of promotional and branding services offered through Easy Way Network. Events, TV, magazine, podcasting, website and app creation, business tools and automation for her business. Even a directory of over 2,500 high-quality EasyWay family members that she can do business with, join venture, or even find affiliates for her own business. Plus all this is rolled into a social network that makes it easy for Amy to connect and follow up with everyone she meets. Amy can also post what she is going on and what she wants other members to know about. Wow, this is awesome. 
Now I have a stage I can promote my events, podcasts, and projects from. Amy then realizes that her pitch she gives on the Easy Way Pitch Party can also be aired and distributed on EasyWay.tv, which gets her talk out to much more people. Amy just got a free commercial. Easy Way even offers production and training services to turn Amy's pitch into a commercial that sells for her even while she is sleeping. So now Amy is put into a directory on a network that is tapped into multiple networks of multiple people that have their own stages, podcasts, and business referral networks themselves. So in short, now Amy has a done-for-you team to promote and brand her just because she decided to check out the Easy Way pitch party stage she was told about. Amy can also refer her friends to the same thing and make 10% of anything her friends purchase from Easy Way Network. Amy gets all this starting at $49.99 a month or $600 annually. Every time Amy gets on the pitch party stage she is not only getting her message out there more she is made to look like a star which will help her attract more business to her business, because Easy Way is helping to boost her online presence notoriety, credibility, and authority. All in one, in short, it pays to do it the easy way. Wow, what an awesome interview that was. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Easy Talk Live. Thank you so much again to Craig and and, uh, and Catherine for the opportunity. And uh, make sure you guys go to easytalkpodcast.com and uh, you know tell your friends and and and, and uh, join us for our, our next episode. We're doing our mega pitch party tomorrow or every other Thursday if you guys want to come speak and, and you just saw the video, it gives you more information. Uh, so make sure that you subscribe and follow me, guys. Follow me on Instagram. I love to hear from you guys. Message me. Uh, I really appreciate uh, everybody that's part of the Easyway family. And please check out our network and the opportunities that we present. So today has been an amazing day, a great episode once again. Thank you again to Spencer Wilding uh, for being our great, uh, spectacular guest. And uh, stay tuned for the next Easy Talk Live uh, show. And uh, when you subscribe, you'll know when the next episode will be. So I'm Eric Zuli, guys. And uh, I always say keep the faith and... Um, you know, ne never, never forget that it's, it's, uh, it's, it's how you manifest and your, the way that you think will make it always happen. So just know that you are who you want to be. I'm Eric Zuli guys. I'll see you guys next time on easy talk live. Please tell your friends, press the share button and, uh, till next time, keep watching.